Hey guys, Nate with Connected here. Today I'm gonna redo our alarm panel interface demonstration video, which lets you take an old alarm system like this and make it smart by connecting it in parallel to a, a home automation platform. Now you will wanna do this if you wanna keep your existing system, keep the keypads and keep everything working the way it is, but add home automation capabilities on top of that, including being able to monitor all of the zones and potentially arm and disarm remotely and get notifications in your smart home app if your traditional alarm system goes into alarm. Just tap the, the switch to turn that on and then you'll see immediately that the alarm system is now going into its countdown and starting to arm. And then and you saw it change just there. Now of course, all right, let's disarm that by tapping here. <laughs> all right, all is quiet. We started shipping this new revision of the alarm panel interface in early 2021. Um, it's now featuring a relay built in, and you see there's a relay terminals built into the board in addition to zones one through six. And the relay is to trigger a key switch on the existing alarm panel so that you can arm and disarm remotely. Previously, you could do this with the original alarm panel interface, but we shipped a separate relay module. It was a little bit more clunkier. Um, we've built that in to the new version, so it makes the in installation a little bit simple, simpler and cleaner. And we do get a lot of questions about this, so I'm going to try to make a very detailed video and show you exactly how to connect the alarm panel interface module so that you can monitor all your zones, see if the alarm has been triggered, and also arm and disarm it remotely with your smart home app. Now when you buy the connected alarm panel interface kits, we have several different kit configurations. It's going to come with one interface module for every six zones of your kit. So it's important to know how many zones you need. This alarm panel behind me is a ADT SafeWatch 3000, which is really just a rebranded Ademco Vista 20, uh, which is one of the most popular alarm panels in North America. So it's very likely that you have something like this in your closet. You'll want to look inside the door of the alarm panel cabinet, and usually there's a wiring diagram on on the uh, inside of the door. And that illustrates the eight zones on this panel. And then I can correspond those to the numbered terminals on, on the actual panel to see how many of those are populated. All right, looking at that wiring diagram, I know that zone one starts with terminals eight and nine, and then it extends through, zone, through terminal 20, which is uh, 19 and 20, which is zone eight. Um, and I can see, I can count the number of zones that are actually in use, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you see, I do have those resistors in line, which we'll get to in a little bit later. This is super common and you don't have to worry about those. Before you get started, I always recommend take a picture with your phone of your alarm panel as it is, just in case we mess something up and we need to go back to the way it was. Uh, and also try to identify all of the wires for each of the zones. Your kit comes with a sheet of wire labels like this and you can see I've already done that um, and put and kind of labeled each one of my zone wires so I know which sensors they're going to. If you don't have uh, a listing from the installer of the zones, check on the keypad. Uh, sometimes it either on the LCD display, it'll show you the, the listing of the zones or the name of the, each zone. Um, or you could just go around the house, open and close doors and see which zone number um, lights up on, on the keypad and then identify the sensors for those zones. My alarm system has six zones in use, but also if we want to be able to monitor if the alarm has been triggered, or if the alarm is armed or disarmed, then we're gonna to need to use these programmable outputs, which are these little pins on the board. And all of the, the Vista boards have these, DSC panels have those also. Most alarm panel brands have programmable outputs, which um, allow you to basically monitor a status on, on the panel if you program it appropriately. And each one of those is gonna take up one zone on the connected alarm panel interface. So in order to complete my system, I need six zones to monitor uh, each zone status, plus two more for the two programmable outputs for a total of eight zones. So I'm gonna go with the 12 zone kit, and that's what I'm demonstrating here today. The interface module connects via this ribbon cable to the um, connected alarm panel Wi-Fi board or the connected alarm panel pro. Um, the connected alarm panel add-on board has a connector for the ribbon cable here, and this supports six zones. The Alarm Panel Pro actually supports two of the interface modules, so 12 zones can be supported on one Alarm Panel Pro board. The key difference here is that the Pro has Ethernet connectivity, 
This one just has Wi-Fi. Other than that, the installation and, uh, and the way it works is effectively the same. Step one is to connect zones one through six on the alarm panel interface module to wired zones or programmable outputs on the Vista panel. You'll need one zone on the interface module per zone or output on the Vista panel. Step two, if you want to be able to arm and disarm your traditional alarm system remotely with your smart home app, we need a free zone on this panel to make a key switch. And then that key switch connects to the relay terminals on the alarm panel interface module. And then finally, step three is to go to your keypad and program those programmable outputs and key switch. All right, one more thing, and this applies to the Vista panels only, and that zone one is kind of a special zone on these panels. You see that zone one is kind of isolated on its own, and that is because this zone is used as a smoke alarm zone in some installations, not all, um, but the bottom line is, is that zone one on the Ademco Vista panels specifically don't work with the connected alarm panel interface module because they're on kind of an isolated circuit. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really a great workaround for that, except for to relocate the sensors that's on zone one to a different zone on the Vista panel. All of the other ones work just as well, and this limitation doesn't apply to other brands of panels like DSC, Paradox, etc. Um, only, as far as we know, only the Ademco Vistas have this limitation on zone one. All right, enough talking, let's get started. Um, before I do, I think it's a good idea to unplug everything and turn, make sure that the alarm system is powered off. To do that, you'll need to disconnect like the backup battery and then also unplug from the wall adapter. My wall adapter is up here, kind of above the, my closet door. Sometimes you might find these like in another room or on the other side of a wall, for, for example. They often will, will wire it through the wall and that's for security reasons, so um, kind of you see a, a an AC adapter power brick like this. This is the uh, this is the power adapter for your alarm panel. Sometimes it's secured with a screw. Um, I've already unscrewed that, so I'm going to unplug this, and now my alarm system is powered off, so we can go ahead and start wiring things up. Okay, because this is a Vista panel, um, and I and we have that issue with zone one that I just talked about. I'm going to reload, and zone one happens to be my entry doors, which is actually pretty common. My front door and garage entry door are tied together on the same zone, and they're in zone one. Um, these are important, so what I'm gonna do, because I have two extra zones at the end here, I'm gonna just relocate zone one to zone seven. And uh, that will basically solve the problem because I don't need zone one anymore. All right, I moved the wires from zone one to zone seven, and later on we'll go and reprogram that using the keypad. Your alarm panel interface kit is also going to come with jumper wires, uh, various kinds. These are the ones with male connectors on both ends. And we're going to take um, a, a ribbon of six of those and connect those to the six wired zones and then to the six zones on the alarm panel interface module. Now I'm going to want to connect these on the high side of each zone. Um, and you can reference that from the alarm panel, from the wiring diagram. Also, usually the high side is the one if there is a resistor that's, that has the resistor in it. Um, and we're just gonna leave everything as it is. Just loosen that screw a little bit for each terminal and stick the wire under there and then tighten it back down. It's getting hot in here. All right, six zones hooked up. Um, and then we're gonna take another pair of male to male connectors and connect that to the aux power output. This is important to get right. Uh, the auxiliary power output is labeled here and on the Vista panel it's zones four and five. Um, we definitely do not want to connect it to one and two which is the AC input. Uh, that will definitely damage the board and um, make you not happy. So the aux auxiliary power output is about 12 volts and that's output by the alarm panel and we need to connect a voltage reference as these two voltage reference terminals which need to be connected to the 12 volt auxiliary output of the Vista panel. That's terminals four and five here, which you can see already have a bunch of wires in it. These are powering, for example, the keypad downstairs, um, as well as my motion sensors and glass break detectors in the house. Um, it's basically a 12 volt auxiliary supply going to loosen that up and I'm going to actually connect these from the top because they're already pretty crowded in there. Okay now let's look up the interface module. We've got our voltage reference 
black, red, um, terminal four, five, and then six zones, one through six, and that's going to go to our voltage reference, ground, and V-ref, so that's black, red. Your kit comes with a little mini screwdriver like this. These are perfect for these little screw terminals. These black ones, um, make sure you open them up completely before you insert the wire, and then insert the wire and then tighten it down for the little mouth to bite on that connector. We've got our voltage reference, and then I'm gonna hook up zones one through six in the same way. All right, there we go. The interface module is all hooked up with voltage reference and six zones. We'll get to the relay part a little bit later. Um, now let's go ahead and, and hook this up, test the zones, and, um, and I'll show you how to tune them. Okay, we're gonna use the ribbon cable to connect the interface module. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use the alarm panel add-on, which is a Wi-Fi only. If you were using the alarm panel pro, it would work exactly the same. There are two connections for the, the ribbon cable. Uh, usually you'll get a little bit better Wi-Fi signal if it's mounted outside of the panel. And so for that, I'm using these magnetic standoffs that we also sell as an accessory. Uh, they go through these mounting holes and they're magnetic on the back side and they stick really nicely on this metal can. There we go. Now we have magnetic feet and this lets me mount the Wi-Fi transmitter part on the outside of the container and then we can route our ribbon cable through one of these punch outs and put it in just like this. Then I can close the cabinet door later and uh, it won't interfere with the Wi-Fi signal. I'm just going to leave this hanging for right now. Um, we have the adhesive back standoffs that can mount this like somewhat over here um, but for now it's a little bit easier for me to tune it while it's while it's still free. Now we have to we have to power the connected alarm panel board with um, 12 volts DC, and that goes into the barrel jack right here. Um, your kit will come with a DC power adapter like this one. I happen to have a plug nearby, so this is definitely the easiest way to go. Um, just plug that in. If you don't have a plug nearby, you can also tap into the 12 volt aux output of the uh, alarm panel. Um, your kit should include a DC pigtail cable. I don't think I have one right here, but you connect black and red to that, and then you can plug that into. Now, when I plug this in, you'll see it light up. The blue light blinks as it's connecting to Wi-Fi. You can use the Connect app to pair it to your Wi-Fi. I've already done that, so the light turns out. Power back on the alarm panel, and then do the, the tuning. So I'm gonna reconnect the battery here, and then plug in you see when I did that, the orange LEDs on this have lit up. Okay, the next step is, is tuning these little potentiometer dials so that we get at the right threshold for the open and close status on each of these zones. The LED should be illuminated when the door is closed or the circuit is closed in the case of a motion sensor or a glass break sensor. When there's no motion detected, the LED will, will be lit. And then when that door is open, we want those LEDs to go out. Uh, and above each LED is a little dial that's called a potentiometer, and we can use this tiny screwdriver attachment that comes with your kit to gently tune that to get right at that threshold. The reason we do this is because each alarm panel has resistor values, and this lets it basically be a universal solution that works with any resistance value, and you only have to do this tuning process once. Very gently, these things are, are easy to strip. So tune it counterclockwise a little bit. You see the, the orange LED went out, and then we want to dial it back just until that light comes back on. So we're kind of trying to get right at that threshold. And so I'm going to do that again. Turn it counterclockwise, the light goes out, and then dial it back just to the threshold of when it's on. We don't want it to be flickering or right on the border, but solid on. Um, I'm gonna do that for each zone. If your alarm system doesn't have any resistors at all, uh, then it, you might not be able to dial it back until it turns out. In that case, just dial it all the way counterclockwise or anticlockwise until you feel a little bit of resistance on that screw. Okay, once we've tuned those potentiometers, now um, you or a partner can go around the house 
and open each one of the doors or windows for each zone and observe that the amber LED for that zone goes out when the door or window or motion sensor is open or activated. Uh, and if it does, then that means everything's wired up correctly, it's tuned correctly, and we're ready to move on to the, the software integration side. I'm not going to go over the software setup in this video because it's different depending on which platform you're using. If you're using SmartThings, you'll use the connected app to discover each connected alarm panel module and then set up the zones and then sync that to SmartThings. If you're using Home Assistant or Hubitat or OpenHab or HomeBridge, then you'll set up the zones using the configuration flow in that platform. We'll have more details on that in, in a different video, but you can also go to help.connected.io for step-by-step -step instructions to configure the zones for each platform. And where a lot of people find great value with the interface kit is being able to monitor if the traditional alarm is armed or disarmed, and also being able to monitor if it's been triggered. So to do this, we're going to use the programmable outputs on the traditional alarm panel. And on the Vista panel, those are these pins right here, which you can also reference here on that wiring diagram. So you'll see they're, they're kind of in a weird order, but we've got one called output 17 and output 18. The other pins can kind of be ignored. So what I'm going to do is connect a jumper wire to output 17 and 18, and then use my second alarm panel interface module to monitor those two just as if they were a wired zone. Okay, we're going to insert the jumper wire trigger 17, which is that first pin. Then there's a blank spot, three, four, and then the fifth pin. That's trigger 18. I'm going to connect the other end to zones one and two of my second alarm panel interface module. I will also need another alarm panel add-on Wi-Fi board to connect to the other end of the ribbon cable to control this one. I'm going to mount this on top just like that. So I'm going to run this ribbon cable through this punch out. Now we need to be able to power both of the alarm panel Wi-Fi boards and your kit will come with a, a splitter, a DC splitter like this one for the number of boards that you have. Um, or you could also just run, run wires, but this makes it really simple. Plug it into that DC splitter and then we have one powering each board and they both light up. You'll see the zone LEDs light up again on these programmable outputs, and these are gonna be tuned in exactly the same way. Okay, before we get out of this closet and, and finish, our, finish cleaning up our wiring, I'm gonna connect the key switch to the relay on the alarm panel interface module, and this is for arming and disarming remotely. So in my case, I have still zone eight that I can use here. Um, I could also potentially use zone one. I think on the Vista panel zone one, if you're using it as a key switch, is gonna require a resistor. So I'm gonna just use zone eight, which doesn't require a resistor. And really all we're gonna do is take another um, jumper with male connectors on both ends and connect that to zone eight, you know, the high and low side. And 20. Now I'm connecting that key switch zone to these two terminals labeled relay on this board. It doesn't matter which, which side goes to which because it's just a open close relay. So there's no polarity here. It's just making an open and closed circuit. There we go. Uh, that's how the relay works. Now since I have, I have two um, interface modules, I could use the relay terminals on either one. Now the final step is to connect the in terminal and that's what controls the relay to the out terminal on the alarm panel add-on board. And you have the option of using the out terminal, the screw terminal here, or the out terminal pin on, on that male pin header. Uh, they're electrically connected, so they're the same thing, essentially. All right, now that we've finished wiring, I'm downstairs by the keypad and we're gonna reprogram uh, the traditional alarm system a little bit to make use of those programmable outputs and also 
uh, to switch the zone 1 where we switched to zone 7 uh, because of the limitation on the Vista panels on zone 1. And then finally to activate the key switch that we wired on zone 8 to arm and disarm the system. So basically three steps. Um, relocate zone 1 and if you're not using a Vista panel or if you didn't have to move zone 1 then you, don't, you can skip that step. Program the outputs, and program the key switch. The programming process that I'm about to show you is specific to the Vista series of uh, alarm panels or the, the ADT branded SafeWatch 3000. If you're using a different alarm panel brand then the process will be similar but the actual codes that you type in will be different and we'll try to document those for some of the popular brands or you will might have to look up in the programming guide for your specific alarm system model how to program outputs and key switch etc. For, uh, for the Ademco Vista series you do need an alphanumeric keypad in order to be able to program it from the keypad. Some of the more basic models don't have a full two-line alpha display here and that makes it fairly impossible to program from the keypad. Um, if you need one of these you can either buy one online or we can order one for you, just contact our support. Now you see that it's showing me that fault on zone 1, the entry door, and that's because remember we had to relocate zone 1 to zone 7. So the first step in this process is to do that. We basically two steps. First we deprogram zone 1 and then we program zone 7 to represent the entry doors. Now programming these things is not rocket science but it is a little bit tricky. It's basically a series of codes that you type in the keypad. Um, and I'll try to document those as much as possible on help.connected.io and we'll kind of breeze through it in this video. But essentially, first you start out, you, you need the installer code to get started in the, in the programming, which the default installer code I've published on the website. If your panel is not working with the default installer code, then you may need to either ask the person who originally installed it what their installer code is. They may or may not give it to you or you can do basically a factory reset of the panel. And I'm not gonna go over that, but you can Google it if you need to, and there's a way to do it. Okay, the installer code for my system is 6321. So I'll hit 6321, and then the code 800, that enters the installer mode, and it's gonna confirm that I've put in the installer code, and I just type star to confirm. Now it's asking me field, which means what field of programming are we going into, um, and we're gonna do zone programming, which the field number is star 56, so star 56. That goes into program, uh, zone programming mode. It's asking me if I want a confirmation. I don't need confirmation, so I just hit star for no. Now I can go in zone by zone and um, reconfigure the zone. So we wanna change zone one to disabled. So starting at zone one, which is already selected, but I'll hit zero one star. And this is showing me the summary of the zone, zone number, zone type, and then you know, some other information about it. Um, so I hit start to continue, and it's currently set as an entry exit zone, which is zone type 01. We want to disable this zone since we've disconnected that wire, so I'll change it to zone type 00. And this will update to zone disabled. Start to confirm. Now it's confirming again, do I want to delete this zone? And I hit 1 for yes. So now, I can, now it gets me back to the beginning and I can continue with the next zone number. We're going to leave zones 2 through 6 the same uh, because we haven't touched those. And then I'm going to pro now program zone 7 to be the entry exit zone which was originally on zone 1. So I type in zone 7 and hit star. And now it's telling me the summary of that zone which is currently disabled, zone type 0. Star to continue. Now we want to make this zone type the entry exit zone, which is 0, 1, entry exit, and then start to continue. Now it will ask me if I want to assign it to a partition and some other things. I'm going to keep it on the default partition and the key default report code and uh, the default hardware type and the default response time just by hitting start to continue and then continue again. Now it's going to ask me if I want to program the alpha. That's to change what it appears on, on this little screen. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to skip that and say no. If you want to do that, you can look it up how to do it. Now it gets me back to the zone assignment screen. Um, that's all we need to do for right now to relocate that zone. So I'm going to quit by hitting 0, 0. And then to exit installer mode, star 99. 
and it says ready. Now the now this is going to show up on zone seven when I open the garage door. Let me see if you can see that. Light that up. When I open the door to the garage, it shows up on as zone seven uh, as it should. And when the door is closed now, it's not showing the fault anymore because we've deprogrammed zone one. Okay, I know I went through that pretty fast, but that's all there is to do to move zone one to zone seven. Now we'll continue with programming those programmable outputs. Remember, 17 and 18. All right, so we'll go back into programming mode by putting in our installer code 6321 and then code 800. And that says, boom, installer code. So hit start to continue. Now it's asking me the field, so we want to do output programming, which is star 79. So I hit star 79, and it's going to ask me um, which output number. Uh, and they, we're going to use those pins 17 and 18. So first we'll set 17 and then star. And it's asking me if I want it normally low or normally high. Um, I think it really doesn't matter. You can configure connected either way. But, you know, to, to go by the defaults, we'll set it 1 as normally low. And, and then move on to output 18, which is set by default. So hit star. And do I want this normally low also? Yes, I'll hit 1 and then star. Now we save that and exit. All right. Next, we want to program what the outputs do. And that's a different menu, that's star 80. So we now go into the star 80 field, and this is the output function number, um, which is basically the way that this system works is there's a number of slots, for example, that you can program different functions. So we're going to just program these functions serially, one, two, three, four. Uh, it gets a little bit complex, but all of this is documented on the website. So we're going to do the first program slot, 0, 1, start and continue. This is basically showing me the summary, so I'll hit, hit continue. I, uh, we'll understand in a minute what all this means. We want to activate this program by a zone type, meaning, so we put in 2 and confirm. And then we want to use a specific code, meaning if it's armed or disarmed. And that's 20 star. And then do any partition, 0 star. And then we want the output to stay closed, which means 2. And then save that on output 17, 17 star. OK, I know that was a little hairy. Um, what that just did was set a program so that when the alarm is armed in stay mode, it's going to change the status to output of output 17 from low to high. Now we want to do the same thing when the alarm is armed away, as well as armed stay. That way, if it's in either armed mode, it will indicate within your smart home platform that the alarm system is armed. So I'll now hit start and return to that programming menu. Number two to get to the second programming slot start or continue, and say activated by zone type. In this case, we want to use zone type 21, which means armed away, so 21 star. And then use any partition, 0. And we want it to stay closed, 0, I mean 2. And then we want that also on output 17. So two functions now on output 17, and then start or continue. Now we need to do, the final step is to program output 17 to return back to low status when the system is disarmed. So we hit star and then go into the third programming slot, 03, start to continue, zone type. Um, we want this zone type to be disarmed. So when the alarm is disarmed, it will change the status to low. Disarm zone type is 22 star on any partition and we want the output action to be zero in this case not one so zero star and we want to save that on output 17 apply that to output 17 17 star all right there's our summary and now we can hit zero zero to quit and test that when the alarm is armed or disarmed it'll update in our smart home app 
call map. Zero, zero to quit, and then star 99 to exit that menu. Okay, next we're going to do a similar thing for output 18, uh, so that will indicate if the alarm is triggered or not. And that's two steps. One, to change the status of output 18 to high when the alarm is triggered, and then to change it back to low once it's not triggered anymore. Okay, again, same process to get into programming mode. Installer code, 800, and then star to continue. Output programming menu, which is star 80. And we're going to now start with function 4, because we've already, we've already used up 1, 2, and 3 for the first output. So I'll start with function 4. And we hit start to continue. And we want this to be also triggered by a zone type, so 2. And then zone type code 33 means burglar alarm. So we'll put in code 33, so meaning when there's a burglar alarm on any partition, we want this output to stay closed, which is 2, and apply that to output number 18. 18. And then we want it to return, we, that's the summary, so output 18, and we want that to be zone type 33, which means a burglar alarm has been triggered. Now we want output 18 to go back to low when the alarm is disarmed again. And so we'll hit star to continue, save that in slot 5, Continue from the summary, uh, again zone type 2, and we want this to be a disarm action which is code 22, so 22 star, and then also on any partition, and we want that output action to go back to low which is 0, and apply this to output 18. And there's the summary, now we can hit star, and then 0, 0 to quit, and star 99 to get out of programming mode. Okay, awesome. Now we can monitor the status of our alarm if it's armed or disarmed, and we also can get a notification in our smart home app if the Vista panel is triggered with a burglar alarm. All right, now the final step is to program that key switch zone that lets us arm and disarm the system remotely using the relay built into the alarm panel interface module. Okay, let's go back into programming mode. Installer code, 800 and then star. Now we program that key switch zone, um, which is zone programming against star 56. So star 56, we don't need confirmations. All right, we, we wired our relay for the key switch on zone 8, so we go into 08. And currently there's the current summary. Currently the zone is disabled, and we're going to change that to a key switch zone, which is zone type 77. 77, key switch, star to confirm, and we'll do that on partition 1. And now it's asking me report code, skip, um, hardwire type 2 to normally open without a resistor. So I'm going to set it to type 2, which is normally open without a resistor because we didn't wire a resistor in that zone. So then hit star, response time, just continue. And there's the summary of that zone. And we don't need to program alpha on this, so I'll just continue. And that's it. So at the end of this, we go to 00, zero to quit the zone mode, and then star 99 to exit installer mode. All right, we're all wired, we're all programmed, and now it's time to see it in action. So to demonstrate that, I've set up basically a simplified demo in SmartThings with, the, with some of the sensors that we just wired up with the two alarm panel boards. Now if you look here, I've basically created a, um, a room in SmartThings and named it Connected Alarm Panel. And to simplify, I've just added my entry doors, my downstairs motion, patio door, and then created a basically a contact sensor for each of uh, alarm state and the armed state, as well as a switch to arm and disarm. So let's go through all of those, and first let's, you know, let's, let's watch how when we open the door, uh, the entry door, it's going to update the state in SmartThings at the same time you'll hear the chime um, on the keypad. That's pretty quick response time. You see the entry door showed open as soon as I open that door. And you hear the, the chime in the background and the, the ready light turns on and off as... 
So we basically got all the functionality of our existing alarm system, but also the ability to monitor it here in SmartThings. My alarm system was wired so that the entry doors are together on one zone. That also includes the front door. So I'll, I'll show you quickly how opening the front door is also going to indicate that the entry doors are open in SmartThings. Um, and then as soon as I close it, it will go back. Now it would be nice if we could separate the front door from the garage door onto two separate zones so that we could monitor them independently in SmartThings. And you absolutely can do that. Just pull apart those wires and connect them to separate zones. Uh, this is even easier in the alarm panel conversion kit because then you're no longer limited to the eight zones that I have on that ADT SafeWatch 3000. All right, back over here by the keypad. Now I want to show you really the cool part, which is how we can arm and disarm it remotely and get the status if the system is armed or disarmed in SmartThings. Um, so I've set up the arm and disarm uh, switch on the output of the connected alarm panel um, to be a momentary switch with a one second momentary contact. And we'll go over in a different video, and it's on, on our website, how to set this up in SmartThings. But um, so what I'll just do to demonstrate is tap the, the switch to turn that on. And then you'll see immediately that the alarm system is now going into its countdown and starting to arm. So I've set it to a one second momentary switch, which indicates a armed away mode. Um, if you set it to less than one second, for example, half a second, that will arm the system in armed, to armed stay. So let's wait here for another 40 seconds. You can see as that's counting down while it is arming, this indicates this was our program output 17, the armed and disarmed state. It's indicating open, meaning that the system is armed. All right, now the alarm system's armed in away mode. And uh, I bet if I walk out there, it's going to get me on the motion sensor. So before I do that, I'll show you in SmartThings, you can see that the system is armed by this sensor being indicated as open. So I'll open this door. And of course, my alarm system is going to go into countdown again. And um, pretty soon, you'll start to hear the siren. All right, it's about to trigger. And let's watch that arm alarm state change in smart things almost immediately when you hear the siren sound. There's the siren. And there and you saw it change just there. Now of course, all right, let's disarm that by tapping here. <laughs> Alright, all is quiet and that worked. And I was able to disarm it remotely and it's still showing me that the entry door is open, but now the arm state and the alarm state have gone back to normal. And there you have it, folks. We've automated our old school wired alarm system with the connected alarm panel interface uh, in just a, half, uh, just a few hours and uh, without any monthly fees.